leads us to put together a little bit of a video on the equipment that we use during our trip. And I'm going to kind of go through the bikes and the gear and everything else. Um, you know, first off, this, this is my Yamaha Super Tenere. And I'll talk a bit more about the equipment that I put on it. And then we have John's GSA Adventure. Um, it's actually the water-cooled version that he's running. Um, but first, you know, we actually did this one time before, back in 2011. And we were both on Honda ST1300s and really didn't have quite the, the same level of gear that we, that we, um, that we used for both the, the bikes and our, and our own personal, you know, what we were wearing. And I'll, I'll tell you just about some of the, the things that, um, that we did and changed over the year for, or since that uh, trip in 2011. So here we are back in 2011 over at Denali, and we're both wearing Olympia pants. I've got hiking boots on. John's got actual boots. He's got an Olympia jacket. I've got a um, an old Tourmaster jacket. Actually, all the gear that I'm wearing is a hand-me-down from a, a previous bike owner. Someone else um, had had worn this gear, sold a bike with the gear, and I and I took it. And uh, you know, the real problem with those pants is they just don't breathe when you have the liners and the rain gear and everything else in there and you know although my jacket never leaked that red jacket never leaked um, John was always wet and both of us were were riding around with wet crotches all the time which which is just miserable for a trip like this so now if you fast forward to 2015 we're both wearing climb uh, Badlands pants which are which are just phenomenal keep you dry all the time um, I've got another Tormaster jacket, which actually leaks on the right uh, right arm, so that's probably the last one I'll get. And uh, John's all all climb with his jacket as well. Um, no problems there. We're both wearing CD uh, Adventure Reigns, but the, the Gore-Tex ones, which do not leak at all. They were phenomenal. I mean, it, other than considering the amount of rain that we had, other than my little bit of water coming in through one arm. Um, I was extremely dry, and I don't think I ever heard John complaining about getting wet with that gear. So getting back to the bikes, I'll talk to you a little bit about what we what we were riding. Um, you know, I think they're both great machines for what we were doing, and um, we had very minor actual motorcycle issues with um, um, pretty small stuff. But um, I'll talk about the uh, the Yamaha here first. This is a 2013 that I bought as a leftover in 2014. Um, it came basically stock, and since that point, I put that that windshield on there, which is a, a V-Stream. I think it's their mid-size wind windscreen, which is fantastic. Really does what you need for a for a long trip. Uh, I added, let me see what else. The uh, the SW Motec. Uh, guard underneath. I added the Alt Rider bars. I put heated grips that are on there. Oxford, I believe. The uh, the um, panniers on the back are Hulin panniers. And then I also did a bunch of wiring and stuff, and I've got a whole bunch of videos of that thing. You can you could see what I did. The other thing you could see there is that, that piece of PVC that I have on there is actually holding my tent poles. I just didn't have enough room in my bags to, uh, to put them, and I wanted to have them in the dry, so I made a little... Um, PVC container just to put them in there. So also on the back of the bike, I've got uh, two little holders there, and I've got one holder's got bear spray in it, and the other one has um, one of my my drink holders in it. And you can see strapped to the top of that bag, I've got um, it's a it's a two liter Camelback essentially that sits there. Um, I've got a no spill gas tank, which was a one and a quarter gallons, which was excellent. That thing is really good for for um, storing gas, not leaking anywhere, and it's really easy to fill your tank with it. And then I've got a small dry bag that, for the most part, all I had in there was excess stuff, like I'd, I'd put um, uh, just a little bit of food or, or clothing that I wanted to have easily accessible. Uh, and then also strapped under there, if you believe it or not, I've actually got a pair of, uh, of um, flip-flop type shoes, some shoes that I use that uh, when, I, when I take my boots off. And the last major exterior item there is that GoPro. And you can see here it's completely filthy, and that's the that's the challenge is trying to keep it clean. Um, 
you know, I went with a fixed mount because I've got it powered off the bike and it's connecting directly into my, my uh, autocom system. Um, you lose a little bit of the ability to point your view, but it is extremely simple. And we were just doing so many miles. I was looking for the simplest way of dealing with it, being able to just, I literally just turn it on and I've got a button, a remote button that I use up on the, um, up on my tank bag. So it takes very little effort to run the camera. When it's strapped to your helmet, it's a bit more challenging. And if I was doing a shorter trip or and really not as many miles, I would much rather have it somewhere where I could point it easily. Now John's bike is just a beast. This thing is uh, is unbelievable for this type of a ride, just because it's got all the electronic suspension. He has he has cruise control, and how much I drove him insane with the cruise control con thing you know, issue. Um, he's got an extra bag on the back, and he's got his tank bag showing there. Um, but pretty much everything there is stock other than he added some bar risers and a um, some bark buster uh, hand guards just to improve those hand guards. I, I don't think he he did much at all. His his stuff is is pretty darn stock um, and and just a, a phenomenal machine. I mean, it, it was always me. It was always the one that had to be gentle to try not to run out of gas because between the, the Tenere and that bike, the Tenere will always, always run out of gas first, without question. One big difference between the bikes is that I'm running uh, Hide Now uh, Scouts, and John is running a TKC 80 up front and a 60 in the rear. And uh, I think he really enjoyed the 80, and believe it or not, it will do 9,000 miles. That's the, that's the bottom line with these bikes. You can make that kind of mileage out of the front. Uh, his rear, he ended up getting a flat partway through, and I don't know if it's the if it was the tire or just just bad luck. Um, but I'll say that you know the hide nows had no issues. They're they're so tough. I had no problems at all with them, um, other than the fact that I don't think the front tracks very well. I think it tra tracks horribly. So if I were to do this again, I'd probably use something different. You know, maybe a, maybe I'm going to try out a, a, an 80 with um, something different on the rear. But you know, even a even a crew three in the front and a and the hide now rear would be great because you could just do so many miles with those tires. And um, you know, I I had I had no issues. There's they still had miles on them. Like the rear still had plenty of room when I got back. So food wise, we're actually carrying quite a bit of of food for the trip. We had snack food for us, bars, and other types of uh, fruity things. And then we had wraps that we were using with uh, pre-made salsa, little little salsa packets, and chicken as well as uh, tuna. And then we had a few dry dinner stuff that so you could make, um, you know, some kind of like, like rice and pasta type dinner stuff. So we'd have food along the way. And this pile right here pretty much has almost everything I was carrying. Um, I don't have a sleeping bag in there by the looks of it, but I had my tent, my uh, sleeping pad, and just quite a bit of the uh, the gear that I was carrying. In terms of tools to fix things, uh, we actually sp split up what we could. We had a couple of small ratchets. Uh, you know, between the two bikes, actually, there's quite a difference in, in how they um, secure things. So, you know, for me, I was carrying um, you know, some wire cutters, a 10 millimeter and a 12 millimeter wrench. Uh, same thing for, for small sockets. Uh, some, a little bit of wires, some epoxy, some Loctite. Um, I was carrying the, um, the, the big, um, sockets that I would need in order to, to remove an axle if I ever needed to, but I wasn't carrying a bar big enough to, to do it. Uh, and then just a variety of things, you know, of course the, um, an air pump and uh, a plug kit, and and John was basically carrying similar type of stuff. We just had things stashed all over the bikes in order to uh, keep it all reasonable as to how much stuff you're you're carrying. I'm actually showing this picture because this is where I used my uh, seal mate. I did manage to get a fork seal leak as I was coming down the uh, the Dalton, and you know I, I I did my best to try and ignore it, but it it became apparent that it was it was actually starting to leak more so um 
I just took apart and used the uh, little fork, front fork seal and used that seal mate. And the seal mate actually resolved the problem really fast. So you know, for the for the fraction of an ounce, it it it, it weighs. It's um, definitely an item that's uh, worth carrying with you. So I don't know what else I can tell you. I guess if you have questions, uh, you know, send them to me and I'll see if I can answer it for you. I can tell you that if you're going to do miles like this, the whole thing is don't carry more than you need. Make lists. Test everything you're you're going to carry with you. Make sure you know where it is on the bike and how it works. Um, you know, I, I think uh, I didn't really um, obsess over things like like gloves. They don't have to always be waterproof. I, I had one waterproof set with me, but I had just a vented um, set of gloves. And, um, you know, if you're if you are doing a lot of miles in a short period, you better make sure you know that everything on your bike is perfect when you leave. Um, but uh, other than that, I mean, it's a, it's a very doable trip. I think pretty much anybody can do it. And the faster you do it, the more complicated it is. So if you have time, it's a very easy trip to do. Well, that's it. Hopefully that helped.